close your eyes, repeat the prayer after me, but repeat it in silence. O oh Allah, guide me among those of whom thou hast guided aright, and preserve me among those of whom thou hast preserved. Befriend me among those of whom thou hast befriended, and bless me in whatsoever thou dost grant me. And deliver me from the evils in which thou hast judged. For surely thou judgest, and none can judge against thee. And surely he whom thou befriendest is not disgraced. Blessed art thou, our Lord, and exalted be thee above that which they set up beside thee. Say he, Allah, is one. Allah is independent upon whom we all depend. He begetteth not, nor is he begotten. He is one, and there is none like him, and nothing deserves to be worshipped besides thee. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, who came in the person of Master Wallace Farad Muhammad, and I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is thy true servant and last apostle. Amen. Let everyone please be seated. In the most holy name of Allah, the all-wise, true, and living God, we forever give praise and thanks to Almighty God Allah for raising in our midst his last and most surely his greatest messenger, our divine leader and teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. My beloved brothers and sisters, we welcome each and every one of you who travel long distance and near to be with us this afternoon. And we thank you for being with us. Before I go any further, I would like to call on one of the representatives of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is Brother Minister Louis Sixx of Muhammad's Temple Number no. Six, Baltimore, Maryland. Brother Minister. In the most holy name of Allah, the one God to whom praise are due, the Lord of all the world. We are thankful for the coming of Master Farad Muhammad, the God whom we have been looking for for a very long time. Our mothers and our fathers were on the slave master's plantation looking for God to come. But in all of their days, he never showed up. But today, God has come. And he no longer has to be looked for. For he has visited you and I, the so-called American Negro, here in the hell of North America. It's wonderful that Allah has come to seek and find and save that people that was lost, yes, that people that was destroyed. Yes, sir. But not only did he come and find us as he promised Abraham that he would do, but he also prayed, promised Abraham that he would raise up one from among them yes, to teach them the book and the wisdom 
and to guide them into the path of truth, although they certainly had been in manifest error. Today, Allah, Master Farad Muhammad, has raised from among you and I the so-called American Negro, the despised and the rejected, the haters by men and the haters of self. But from among you and I, this dead people, this rejected people, God has raised up that one that is styled in Scripture as the Lamb without spot or blemish. This great Lamb of God, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, has been on his post and has been here in the wilderness of North America seeking to save mine your life. And he has said to his God, Master Farad Muhammad, that I'm willing to pay the price for the life of my people. I'm willing to be a lamb of sacrifice. I'm willing to lay on the altar and give up my life for the sake of my people. What a great man that God has given us. He has given to you and I a man greater than we know. He has given to you and I a man that loves us more than we have the intelligence to love ourselves. We are a people that don't love ourselves. We have been a people taught by the enemy of ourselves. And he has taught us to hate ourselves. He has taught us to reject ourselves. He has taught us to fight and kill one another. But he gave us a man that loved us more than we love ourselves. And that man that loves us more. That man who loves us more than we love ourselves is none other than the most honorable and humble Elijah Muhammad. stand here in the house of my Lord. I'm honored today to stand here in your presence to speak to you for some two, three minutes about the beauty of a man that is so wonderful and so beautiful that it is almost beyond our ability to comprehend such a beautiful creature that God has given to you and I in the presence of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. One scripture says, what did you go out to see? A wind shaking in the wind, a, 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 yes, a breeze shaking in the wind? No, you didn't go out to see that. You could have stayed at home and seen it. What did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine raiment? No, they're down around the White House. What did you go out to see? A prophet? No, he's more than a prophet. If he is more than a prophet, and this was a saying from those great prophets from God, who are supposed to be the wisest of men, but this man that God would give to you and I in the last day, he would be so great he would be so wonderful to so those prophets weren't even able to see what he would be. So they just said he would be more than a prophet. But they didn't know what he would be themselves. God has given us this day. We call him a messenger. We call him a prophet. But we still don't really know who God has given to us this day. All praise is due to Allah for giving to you and I, the honorable Elijah Muhammad. What would we say all praise is due to God for giving to us the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. 
You may ask the question, why would he say that? Why would he say praise is due to Allah for Elijah Muhammad? I say that if you woke up this morning and you thank God because he allowed you to see another day and you are still in hell. And if you woke up this morning and you thank God because that sun was on the horizon and that sun still finds you in hell and you can't eliminate your hellish condition because of the day and because of the sun. Then I say, when God gives you a man to absolutely take hell off of your back and erase the pain and the sorrow that the white man has put on our back for these 400 years, I say, you should say, all oh, praise is due to Allah. I was blind, and he has made me to see. This was not Jesus of 2,000 years ago because he's 2,000 years dead. And you just as blind as you ever were. I was deaf, and he has called me to hear. That's Elijah Muhammad. I was crippled, and he has bound up my wounded leg. I was sick to death, and he has pulled me away from death, and he has stood me on a solid plane. That's why I say all praises due to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is a man that is teaching black men to love black men. This is a man that is teaching black women to love black women. This is a man that is bringing about a unity between the black man and his black woman, the so-called American Negro. in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You say, what a friend we have in Jesus. And that's right, if you understand who Jesus is. And in a little while, Jesus will be here, and you'll find out that you truly have a friend in Jesus. I thank you for these few moments. And I thank Minister Yusuf for allowing me to speak to you for these few moments. But most of all, I thank the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the great messenger of God. Salam alaikum. We thank Almighty God Allah for giving the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a minister, hard-working minister like that, in Temple Number 6 in Baltimore, Maryland. Before we go any further, I will bring before you another minister of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is a hard-working minister. He's the minister of, of Muhammad's Temple Number 3, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Brother Minister Henry 1A, give me on the back. the beneficent, the merciful, to whom all holy praises are due, the Lord of the world. And we do thank Allah for giving to us our leader, teacher, and guide, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. My dear beloved brothers and sisters, I'm happy today to see that at last the black man of America is waking up. And our waking up is due to the teaching of messenger Elijah Muhammad. He is truly the leader and teacher for every black man, man, women, and child in the wilderness of North America. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I would like to have a few words to say about our leader and teacher. Brothers and sisters, Messenger Elijah Muhammad has taught us to love each other. 
This means, brothers and sisters, that we must first learn ourselves and our kind before we can love ourselves and kind. He has taught us how to love ourselves because he taught us who we were. Messenger Elijah Muhammad is truly a leader for us, brothers and sisters. And every black man and woman in North America should wake up and look at him as what he is. Because every bird in the air has a leader. These birds follow their leader. The little fish in the sea has a leader and they follow their leader. Everything that God created has something to lead them other than the so-called American Negro before Messenger Muhammad give us the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. For 400 years we were without a leader. We all long for a leader. We ask for a leader. Now Allah has come and he has given to us a leader, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. My dear beloved brothers and sisters, one of the greatest examples for us is the little ant. The little ant is a hard worker. He followed the instruction of his leader. He worked hard. Now since Allah has given us a leader, why not we do the same? Why not we get behind the leader that Allah has given to us? If Messenger Elijah Muhammad has accomplished what you see without the help of the masses of black people, he have accomplished all that you see with just the help of a few faithful followers. Then what if all of us would get behind the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? If all of us would get behind the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, the fulfillment of the scripture would be fulfilled. The, the scripture that uh, states that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. In fact, what Messenger Muhammad has done already, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what Messenger Elijah Muhammad will do. Because the messenger Elijah Muhammad can get a man to stop believing in a home beyond the sun, moon, and star after he has been believing this for 40, 50, and 75 years, the man is doing a work that eyes have not seen. Brothers and sisters, if the messenger can stop a man from shooting dice, drinking liquor, and using dope, this is something that no one else in America is doing then he's already doing what I have not seen. So brothers and sisters, I say unto you, those of you who have not heard him yet, when you see and hear Messenger Elijah Muhammad, you will say, as the Queen of Sheba said when she saw and heard what Solomon was saying, you will say too that truly the half of Messenger Elijah Muhammad has not been told. I thank you, brothers and sisters. I salam As the scripture said, and his ministers was a flame of fire. Thank you over that. We see Messenger Elijah Muhammad is well represented there in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Now, my beloved brothers and sisters, I bring before you another hard worker of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the ministry. See, brothers, Messenger Muhammad needs a million ministers. And that is more than all of us in here. Do you understand? So I'm going to bring before you another one of his hard working ministers who have been working hard for a long time, and he is a trailblazer. Do you understand? So I give before you, I mean I give away and bring before you the minister of temple number seven, and also the national representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan. In the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum.
them. In the name of Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the world. And we thank Allah for blessing us with our beloved leader, teacher, and guide, the messenger of Allah, the most honorable, Elijah Muhammad. Yes. To Minister Yusuf Shah, fellow ministers, members of the official staff, brothers and sisters, I'm very grateful and thankful to Almighty God, Allah, through his messenger for this honor and this privilege to have a few words to say to you on behalf of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I count it an extreme honor, blessing, and privilege that Almighty God Allah opened my eyes to see this man. It is a privilege and a blessing that Allah allow you to see this man. For many look but do not see. No wonder the scripture says, Hear ye deaf, look ye blind, that you may see. How can the blind man see? How can the deaf man hear? Surely the prophets would not ask a man to do that which was impossible for man to do. Behold, the book says, look, Look at my man who was blind as you are blind and listen to the words coming out of a man's mouth who was dumb and deaf as you are dumb and deaf. Surely you will know then that I have visited with you. So many of us fail to see the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as he is. Many of us say, well, I've heard of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They tell me he's a great leader. Some say, I've heard of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He has a wonderful economic program. Some say yes, and I've visited the University of Islam. He has a wonderful educational program. And others say, well, I don't know too much about that, but I know um, my friend has a son who was a drug addict, and he went down to that place where that Muhammad is teaching, and he's not on drugs anymore. I've got a friend that uh, he was just no good, bad, or everything of evil. He used to do it. But now he went over to that temple and he came back and he's different now. Well, I don't know what that Mohammed has, but it must be something because everyone that he teaches changes. My dear brother and sister, the prophet said, let's reason together. If a man in your midst and mine can change the lifestyle of those who have lived their lives in the particular style that they are living for many years, and this man with a word out of his mouth can change their lifestyle, Make a drug addict put down his drugs. 
Make the reefer smoker stop smoking his reefer. Make the wine drinker lay aside his bottle. Mm. Make, now think of it, a man who was trying to be other than a man, trying to be a woman. Make that man turn around and see the glory of being a man. And then make that woman who found pleasure in love with another woman, make her turn around and see the natural way in which Allah created her. And then take this people who had no unity and then bring them together into a harmonious whole. Take a doctor and a lawyer and a dentist and an architect and a craftsman and a teacher and put him together with the wine drinker, the reefer smoker, the uneducated, the fool, the alley man and make them work together for the common good of all, then I ask you to behold this man Elijah. understand the Holy Quran asks us not to be like the cattle listen when you listen you're not only hearing a word but you're reasoning with that word and as you reason with that word, that word is a sound, and the sound enters your ear. Well, if the sound enters the ear and you hear it, you are no longer deaf. And if that sound is the word of God, and in that word there is light, then in your hearing of the word of God, you are also gaining the light that will give you sight. So that when you behold the object, you will see it according to the light of the knowledge that is contained in the Word of God. Oh, please, this is your love.
I would love to talk with you about Elijah. My brother, Minister Lewis, was right. More than a prophet. Mm -hmm. More than a messenger. Mm -hmm. Who is he like? What has happened in the midst of us, brothers and sisters, that the prophet said, this is the Lord doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. What has happened? Oh, brother and sister, it is so great and so wonderful that we just want to, what we say, have a little fireside chat on the great man that's in our midst. The Bible, Old Testament closes prophesying the coming of Elijah. The word Elijah or the name Elijah, some scholars say means God is with us. When Elijah comes, that would mean that God is present. He's not far away from Elijah, for Elijah means God is present. God is with us. Oh, listen to it now. Praise be to God. scholars of language say that the name Elijah means the sum, S-U-M, the sum. Some scholars say his name means the answer, the answer. Some scholars say his name means the medicine. That's pretty good. You know, when a people are torn asunder and you want to bring them together, there's an axiom in mathematics that says the whole is equal to the sum of its parts. Mm. The sum is all. And that name or that word all is the very three first three letters in the name Allah. When Elijah comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will be from the all. And the all-knowing, all-seeing, all-powerful would have raised him up to be a witness that God exists. You know, a man can have an excuse to disbelieve if he hasn't seen, if he hasn't heard. He can say, well, I don't believe. When the all-wise God makes his appearance and does a work that no man ever did before him, in fact, he does what men call the impossible right before the eyes of the world, then no man has a cloak for disbelief if they would behold this work that God has done. Everybody all right? I was just checking. Elijah is the sum 
Elijah is the answer. Answer? If there's an answer, then there's some seeking going on. Is that right? If you are seeking, you're seeking an answer to what you seek. What? Yes, sir. What is it that you are seeking? You're seeking an answer to who you are. Why you are black. You know you are black, but why are you black? What caused you to be black? You'd like to know that, wouldn't you? You're seeking an answer to why does the black man seem to suffer so much? Why do we seem forsaken? Why are we in this condition? What did we do to get ourselves in this condition? Did we sin or did our father sin? Who did sin that we are in this condition? We want an answer. Who is God? The messenger said that the greatest question that a man could answer or ask is, who is God? You want to know who God is? You want to know where is he? You want to know what is he? You want to know, do I look like him? You want to know, is he human or is he spirit? What is the answer? You're seeking an answer to your question. Well, every question that you have that you're seeking an answer to, if you really look at it, you're seeking Elijah. Because he is the answer. Look at it to it. That's a heavy thing to put on a man's shoulder. You seek freedom. You seek justice. You seek equality. Nature makes you seek that. You seek life itself. Nature makes you to seek that. You seek truth. Yes, you do. You seek elevation. You seek the power within to be brought out that the world may bear witness to the greatness of God within you. But you can't get what you seek until you find Elijah, for Elijah is the answer to what you seek. That's a powerful man we're about to behold. That's a great man that we're about to look at. They say he's the medicine. Well, if Elijah means the medicine or the solution, then there must be a problem somewhere that needs answering. If Elijah means the medicine, are we sick? Do we need a physician? Do you think that we're a well people? How could we be well? Do we act well? Do we act sane? No, we act like a people insane. Oh yes we do. An insane person is a person that is out of his mind. Well, where is your mind? How could you be in your right mind? when you don't know yourself don't wear your name don't speak your language have not been educated by your own you've been educated by the white man and he put his mind in you so you are working off of his mind you are working off of his life is that right so then you are not in your mind, you are out of your mind into his mind. You need a doctor. All praise the teacher allowed. Oh yeah. You can tell when a man is crazy. He acts crazy. 
He needs to be restrained sometimes. He doesn't like restriction. But you've got to restrict the crazy man. He may hurt himself. Look at how we are. How hateful we are to self and kind. Look at how we are. How envious and jealous we are of one another. Look at how we are baptized in envy and jealousy to such degree that we will destroy the progress of the whole just to destroy some brother or sister that we don't like who has an advantage that we want. Don't tell me you don't need a doctor and the doctor is on his way. white man. The doctor is on the way. The healer is on the way. What do you mean healer? Oh, here I go again, you say. Oh, wait a minute. Just be quiet. Be cool. When we say the healer, we mean a man that has wisdom that is sufficient to heal you and me from every spiritual and physical sickness if we would abide by the wisdom that is in the head of the doctor. He's the sum, he's the solution, he's the answer, he's the medicine. Behold my servant, whom I uphold. Now think of that. Behold my servant whom I uphold. Here's a man being upheld. Even though what he teaches shakes the foundation of the white man's world, you would think that Elijah should come tumbling down. But Allah says to you, Behold my servant whom I uphold. Whatever Elijah speaks out of his mouth, God upholds it and brings it to pass. Two weeks ago, from this very rostrum, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to you in Chicago, he said, you will not believe until the very earth shakes beneath your feet right here in Chicago. The words had hardly gotten out of his mouth. When you woke up one morning and the earth was shaking beneath your feet. But that's just the beginning. Whatever Elijah Muhammad says from his mouth, Allah will uphold him. You can't harm a man whom God upholds. Behold my servant whom I uphold. I will pour my spirit upon him and he will bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Think of that. I will pour my spirit upon him. The man Elijah that you're about to see is a man on whom and in whom God has poured his spirit. What are you talking about, his spirit? Muhammad teaches us that spirit is the energy of life. This is to teach us that the energy of Elijah's life is the energy of God's life. The energy that moves Elijah is God. Oh, that's something. When a man pours his spirit on a man, he not only puts his energy in that man, he puts his mind in that man he takes over the brain of that man and he's at the core of the man's thinking and this man, he says, is full of his spirit. Now think of this. And we are full of the spirit of the enemy devil that brought our fathers into slavery. So if you want to be yourself, 
You've got to come to the man who is full of the Spirit and drink from him. And if you drink his Spirit, you're drinking the energy of God and the energy of your own true life. And the more of Elijah that you take in, the more of the devil that it flushes out. Until you become like unto the fountain that you're drinking from. But you can't drink from this fountain in doubt and suspicion. You know, when you go to a fountain to drink and you hesitate, I don't know whether the water's good. I'll just take a little bit. Well, that's all you get. Because you're drinking in doubt. You're drinking in suspicion. But when you recognize that the man you're drinking from is not here to do you any here to heal us where we are sick, then you open wide the door. As the book says, fling wide the gate. The Jews leave a door ajar for Elijah. Don't you be like them. Because Elijah is not coming into a door left ajar. You don't open up your heart just a crack. Elijah is independent like his God. He'll not. And if you open up to him, he'll come in. I say to you, when he comes, don't have your heart halfway open to him. His work is too magnificent for you to open up halfway to a man who has gone all the way for you and me. Open up yourself to the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Here in our audience today, we have many professionals, intellectuals, who have come to hear the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who would like to offer help to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, because we, his followers, may have faith, but we lack the skill of how to help a man with a super, super, super task. An unbelievable task. And it takes more than just faith to do it. Though faith is great, you need the expertise to go along with faith. So we are blessed to have in our midst today those who have that expertise. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is asking you, brothers and sisters, to come and help him put the black man on top. So if there are any professionals in our audience, you know when I say professional, I mean doctor, dentist, lawyer, teacher, architect, engineer, chemist, physicist, whatever you are in the business world or in the world of um, teaching, instructing, if you would like to have a word to say about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad or about your desire to help the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, or anything that you want to say. This is your house too. Would you mind? If you are of that quality and that capability, we'd love to hear from you at this time. Are there any intellectuals in the house? Here comes a, a brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Brothers and sisters, uh, my name is Brother Robert. I have not yet received my ex, but I'm processing. And I work at a Packard Electric in Warren, Ohio. And I have just graduated from an electrical engineering school uh, in Youngstown, near Youngstown, Ohio. Now, this paper qualifies me to be uh, 
study in electrical technology. This piece of paper that I received doesn't mean a thing without a job to go with it. Now, I was in the process of getting into a apprenticeship program at Packard Electric, and something just hit me. Why should I be striving to get somewhere in the white man's civilization when I can get somewhere in Muhammad's civilization? <laughs> Now, I came to Temple 9 without my ex. I come to look for my ex. I started work right away. Whatever I could do, I'd be glad to scrub a flow in any Muhammad temple with my degree. Yes, sir. All praise be to Allah. Salam alaikum. Thank you. Let's hear it for the brother. All praise is due to Allah. Listen to what brother says. He has a degree in electrical engineering. But he needed a job. See, no matter how much theory you gain, you need some arena to practically apply what you learned in theory. And there's no black man developing anything for the intellectuals of our kind to practically apply what they learn for the benefit of black self but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And that's why it is so important that you with your degrees come on and let's pool that knowledge to help Elijah Muhammad pull the black man up out of the bottomless pit of hell. Is there another? brother of this caliber or sister in the house who would like to have a few words to say before the Honorable Elijah Muhammad arrives. Don't be bashful. Don't be bashful. Come on up, brothers. Here comes another fast-moving brother. My name is Brother Alan Fivex. I just received my ex Saturday. All praise is due to Allah. That's right. <laughs> Take your time, Brother. Uh, I came in February when I heard the messenger speaking, uh, 72. I had just received my degree from uh, Malcolm X College. Another brother just searching. And, uh, in 71 in business administration I had a shop in Malcolm X College selling dashikis and incense and when I found out about the messenger and I came in and checked it out one time I joined up um, I came I wanted to go to I wanted to be in the, in the school I wanted to work with the children you know uh, brothers and sisters uh, little kids I love children I just want to deal with them you know and uh, I just say all praises due to Allah, and wherever I'm needed at in the temple, I'm going to work diligently. I, I'm working at Malcolm X College now as a mission counselor, recruiting students uh, to come to Malcolm X. But uh, if it be the will of Allah, I hope to get into the temple and working. And if that's where I got to be at right now, that's my post. Salaam Alaikum. It's here for him. Wonderful. Here's a brother that has his degree in business administration. He got it from a college named after one of Muhammad's students that went astray from his teacher. And you know the white man who names colleges after black people does not name colleges after black people who mean black people that much good except there's a trick involved in it. When the white man names a college after one who rose up against 
the messenger, the idea involved behind that is to take you who are in that college and endear you to the one that the college is named after so you will go astray from the living man that's in your midst who can guide you around. Check it out, brother. You must remember, brothers and sisters, I don't want to upset you or make you angry, but you must remember that the white man always gives you somebody to worship after their day. And you are a living people in a living hell. And you need a living man to get you out of that living hell. And that living man is going to be here in a few minutes. And that man is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. and sisters must always be wise to the tricks of the enemy. He lifted up Martin Luther King's name in a worshipful way after he murdered King. He lifted up Malcolm's name after Malcolm went away from his teacher in a murderous way. Then his desire is to keep you following the dead and negating the living. You are about to witness the living master of wisdom, the greatest living teacher of wisdom among men and the greatest teacher of wisdom who ever lived among men. This is Elijah. This is the one of whom it is written, he's more than a prophet. This is the one of whom it is written, behold, I send my messenger from before my face and he shall prepare the way before me. This is the sum, this is the total. This is the medicine, this is the healer, this is the answer, this is Elijah. I beg you to behold this man Elijah. Look ye blind and hear ye deaf, that you may see this marvelous man that is in our midst, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Are you ready to see Elijah? Are you ready to see Elijah? Are you ready to hear Elijah? Will you listen to Elijah? Will you open up your heart to Elijah? When Elijah comes, behold, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is here with us and will be in our presence in a few minutes. My dear brothers and sisters, when a man of this magnitude comes, though he's so meek and so humble, so lowly of heart, we have to learn how to appreciate a man of this magnitude. We have to learn how to respect a man of this magnitude. He's not an ordinary man, and he doesn't deserve ordinary treatment. He's an extraordinary man because he's directly from God and God's spirit is in him and around him. So how should we walk around Elijah? We should tip around Elijah. How should we respect Elijah? We should bow to Elijah. When you bow your head to a man, that's a sign that you recognize that his head is superior to your head. All praise is due to our lives. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I thank Almighty God, Allah, for this great man. I thank Allah that God has raised up a man to answer our prayers, to answer our needs, to guide us on the right path. And if every one of you, after the Honorable Elijah Muhammad finishes speaking to you, would unite with him. Take your knowledge, brothers and sisters, and submit it to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Don't hold your degree in proudness, because God hates a proud man. Submit yourself and say, here is my degree, dear Holy Apostle. What can you do with me? And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad will make of you a greater man or woman than you ever dreamed you could be. 
the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the maker of men. He's making greater men than Jesus made of his disciples. He's making greater followers than Moses made of those who followed him. Yes, he's making greater men behind him than Elijah made of the prophets that followed behind Elijah. For this man is a man in whom God's own spirit dwells and he's pouring that spirit out over the people. My beloved brothers and sisters, when the messenger pours his spirit out over the people, the spirit of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the spirit of God in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad will make you a greater man than ever was in the history of men gone by. You're going to see generals today like Hannibal never could have been, like Genghis Khan and Tamerlane wished they could be. The Bible says if you look around, you'll see the prophets alive again. You'll see Moses again, Daniel again, Ezekiel and Isaiah again. Not that they will be alive, but the very spirit that made them what they are is full today for you if you would drink from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. There will be philosophers and scholars and scientists today that will make Galileo and the old ancient white European scholars and philosophers as though they never existed. They will make the old ancient philosophers and scholars of the Islamic world as though they never existed. If you would but drink deep from this fountain of living waters that is in the midst of us today. Approach the fountain with humility. Approach the fountain with respect. Approach the fountain without doubt. Here he is, the messenger of Almighty God Allah. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Behold. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I am very happy to look upon your smiling faces here this afternoon. We have to see you, Yes, sir. And I don't think that you could travel over the country of America and find such beautiful city as I am looking on of you. You look so beautiful being yourself and being in the right place to continue yourself. This is the place. I think you, my brother, I want to call him another name. The East Coast Buster. <laughs> Brother Farrakhan, I call him that name and I don't think I miss it. He busts up the East Coast. Look out, Brother Western Ministers. He's out here to bust you, <coughs> the West up. And so you better be careful. The sun uh, is prophesied to rise from the west. So, if he's got to come from the east to rise from the west, we welcome. We also have with us some very, very responsible people for this situation yes, that we are now in. Yes, we are very happy to have you here. Mr. Travis Smith, teacher. Ms. 
Ever M. Stadden, teacher, if I miss call your name, just a lie to my uneducation. <laughs> I don't know wh whether this is a miss or a miss they didn't say. Sonia Jones, teacher. Dorothy Lee, medical technologist. Draw or no draw, countess, architect. Oh, yes, sir, brother, we need you. <laughs> Honest R. Rath, editor. Yeah, we need you too. Black Almanac. Very good. Charles Manager, consultant. Well, I have a few things I'd like to consult you on. Mr. Cliff, 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 what, how you spell this? I pronounce this, I think. Cliff, Cliffus Williams, President? Cleophus. That's right. I had an odd letter there and I should have helped remember it. There's seven letters there and I missed that odd one in pronouncing. Of international long show. Well, brother, I don't know about the long show, but we will soon be able to have some of that works going on out there on the water. But please do not strike on us. <laughs> so we are getting up into the world, brothers, to have these type of people sitting around with us. Miss, uh, Miss or Miss Weatherspoon, Contest. Marketing and analyst. Joy MacArthur, social worker. Thomas Clark, radio commentator. Mr. Trevors, Smith, Littler teacher. Ms. Eva Ems, Staten, teacher. Sonji Jones, teacher, Dorothy Lee, medicine, technology. Well, I'm a little late today. I feel a little kind of physically unfit for my job today. So I see I have lots of doctors around. I think this is about all. No, Jill, Counts, Architect. These the people I want. Anisha Ratha, Editor, Publisher, The Black Almanac. I think I call out this one. I think this is very good that I have you here with us this afternoon, and I hope that you will enjoy what we have to say. I can tell you what I am. I'm just a messenger. I have a message to deliver to you from the Lord of the world. We need this type of professional people to get going. Get going on what? Get going on building us a world of our own. That's what I mean. We don't want this world. We want to build us a world. We want a world of our own. And this is the type of 
professional people that we need yes, sir. to get started with that world. I no more want the world that I was born in. I want my own world. I don't want you to be so absorbed or emerged into this world that you cannot get out of it to build you one of your own. This was made in us when we was babies, looking forward to the white man for everything. This is why it's so hard to get you to do something for yourself. It is because you always had self on the white man. Let him take care of self. And you do nothing but play like children. This thing must be stopped. And that uh, the only way to get it to stop, you have to stop it yourself. We want you to know that uh, the Islamic believers is now in for building a wall of their own. They are not satisfied with this world. And we are trying to build a wall of our own. We don't have to try much for the world is already carved out by divine. And therefore that stops us from trying to carve out pictures to try to make a world. The world is already carved out for us and the architect is Allah himself. So I don't think you have much to argue with yourself about during that which has already been made for you. We don't want to hold you here no great long time, but we do want you to pay attention to what we are saying. We don't want you to think that we are thinking in the way of this world's thinking. And this is what I want to do for you when you come here. I want to change your way of thinking. Once that has been done, then you own the road for self. We have great men, we have great women that have plenty of that know-how, but they lay down at the gate of their enemy, the devil, blue-eyed Caucasian, begging him because they don't know how to get started for self. We must learn to get going for self. Since we have this kind of knowledge that we learn from our enemy, put it to work for self and not for the enemy. Look how silly you was. God sent the Christian and the Buddha to fight a war, to kill each other. You jumps in there to help save both of them. Just think over that. This war, you had no rights in any more then a turtle have rights to be standing up here trying to preach to you.
You say, well, I fight for my country. When did you have a country to fight for? Just tell me that and then I'm through. Back in the days of the first war, I joined up for that. Allah must have known that I didn't belong in. So, just one day before they was calling up, that group that I was in, they declared that the war was over. I never have seen people so lovers of going to war as you has been in the last two wars. I wasn't thinking about wanting to go to the war. I even went in fast to try to get as little as possible so I would not be in that war. So they said if you didn't weigh 112, they would not take you. So I tried my best to come down to that. But if they'd have waited till this day, I would not have had fast to get down to it. I'm not much over that now. But I want to say that I'm one of the most happiest men on earth to own a whole nation. Thank you. That must be a rich man on a whole nation. Well, since you had 400 years here waiting on the devil. I think you could wait on me. At least for an hour. The Holy Quran is a book or scripture in which you don't know anything about. But it verifies the Bible and the Bible verifies the Quran. The Quran is a late scripture revealed to Muhammad and that was around 1400 years ago near. But I would say to you if I wanted to challenge it the author of it who made the Bible I would say first who made the Bible did the white people make it or did black people make it? Who made the Holy Quran? You say, Muhammad. Muhammad will say to you, it was revealed to me. But who was the revealer? <laughs> oh yeah, we want to tax some of these uh, no oh. If you think a spook came down to Moses, ask and question what Moses 
said, the spook said to him, Spirits don't talk like that. Moses said that he met God. And that when he met God, God told him when Moses asked him who he was, who shall I tell them who you are? He was so mighty in wisdom and in strength. He just told Moses, tell him I am that I am. That's a mighty man. I'm not particular about whether they know me or not. But I am that I am. And when I let go I am, they will know who it is. He says to Moses, I am the God of your father. And you ask me who I am when I'm the father of you? <laughs> you know, these are beautiful answers. He says again to Moses, Come, Moses, I want to send you to Pharaoh. Moses didn't want to show off his mighty self. He said, who am I to send to Pharaoh? He said to Moses, that was in some. He says to Moses, you go and you tell Pharaoh that you have met with me. Pharaoh is a scholar. He should know that you are not talking over yourself. You are talking about a man that he has been dreading to see come. Who am I to go to Pharaoh? I am going with you, Moses. And if I go with you, I will bring Pharaoh to his knees. This is what he meant. So Moses was scared of Pharaoh, but he went. He found out that Pharaoh was not nothing to this God. So that's what I have found out. If the Holy Quran does not verify the Bible, the scripture in which the prophets brought in made that up, how could we recognize a book that you give a name to that don't verify the truth of the book which we have? Well, we cannot do that. But when it verifies the truth in, from the book in which we have, we got to believe. We want you to know that we live in the end of both of these books. You won't study Bible in the hereafter, nor will you study the present Quran. No, you will have a new book. And that new book will replace 
the Bible and the present Quran. Yes, Do not you read in the Bible where that it teaches you that he, the prophet, or the spirit of the prophet, says in his hearings, go take that little book and read it, eat it up. Think over that. A new book coming in to be. And that uh, that new book is the thing that the people must give ear to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now we're going the right way for these two former books, the Old Testament and the New Testament, has served their purpose. So now we have to remove them and get the third book and a fourth book. There are two more to come. One is for you and one is for the orthodox world. It takes a little more for them since they are the fountain of scripture than you, for you never had any. No, no prophet ever come to you before. So says the Holy Quran. And we know we didn't see one. We were here. And we haven't seen no prophet. So the Holy Quran says to you and to me that I am the first ever was sent to you. To a people the Holy Quran says, to whom no one has come before you. So I am here. I hope you will learn to love me. I have worked as hard as any other prophet to pay for his uh, chosen uh, Allah. I have, if you remember, I have did everything that but died physically and I had my life for that. I came up, or rather he brought me up, on that bond of worry that I would give my life for you if necessary. This is the only way that God can use a man to teach people. He got to be willing to give up his life as you read in the Bible how that prophets a long time ago were killed by their people trying to teach them to come to God, the devil, and the people killed them. They have been killing prophets ever since God sent a prophet. Because the prophets of God uh, destroys their work, prevents the <coughs> evil from coming in by their truths. Now comes Elijah, and that uh, you read much of that, you start on Elijah and the kings of the Bible. And uh, you read him 
until you get into the revelation. This is uh, kind of an important little fellow. He never taxed the servants. He taxed the kings. From the Genesis to the Revelator, you will find him attacking kings, not the servants. He fight them. He's some tough little fellow. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and that man spoken of in the beginning of the book almost. He's spoken of as straightening up the old path and making a way for God to come to the people. He will make a path. And then your Lord, your God, whom you wish you to see, will come seven. After Elijah picks up a path for him. The way is too crooked for God to come in. Elijah must come in and make him some followers. This is what they call the pathway. He got to have something of his own to come after him. All he wants you to do is just to give him a chance to claim you so he can fight the enemy who has helped you. And the bondage of sin. So, the book teaches us that Elijah must come and make a way for his God to come and get his people. Note, Elijah just makes a little few people so that God could have a claim on the whole. This is wonderful. Elijah straightens out the world of his people with just a few. Immediately, here comes the owner of all. I think you should be happy to know to know what time that you are living in a time in which the world will be changed around and a world of peace and security will be made for you and you will own what you already have on. You will have the freedom to use it as you please. Better world that the people will be happy to live in it. We cannot be happy living in a world that every day and night we are afraid for our own lives, our children's lives. We don't want a world like that. The root of it is that we have an enemy on our earth that don't belong on it. In the creation of the heavens and the earth, our fathers didn't make any of this. No, they had peace. Here comes alone an enemy of ours just 6,000 years ago. He goes and 
make a people to be our enemy. But he can't last long. Just 6,000 years now, the people is all ready to throw him in the fire. Can't live with no such people. You can't get along with them in peace. So they must be removed. Not said to go and isolate them in some parts of the earth. He will come out, he's too smart. Go and kill and then burn him. Burn him up. The Bible said root and branch. Get him. Don't save nothing of him. Oh, poor devil. I'm so glad for you. Not sorry. Look at our poor brothers, our poor sisters in the South, that the whole thing began to move north, out here in Indiana, killing and burning our poor innocent people. You love a people like that? I uh, should think you was insane if you did. See them, read of them, killing and burning your parents, your sisters and brothers. And now here stand God with a soul of eternal death in his hand rid you and me of that type of people. And you love him so well that you'll start out defending him, trying your best to find some law of the scripture that will uh, try and defend him. But the scripture don't defend him nowhere. The scripture condemns him. It is you that he made ignorant, blind, deaf, and dumb, and fill you full of fear of him. That's why the Bible teaches you and me throughout it, fear not. Fear not, O ye my little flock. Why? Your Lord will do great things for you. He's so wise. He's so mighty. He found me shivering, shaking. He said, come on, go with me. I will take that fear out of you. And he's taking it out of me. Now I go through the valley as is it written in the shadow of death, for he is the, the death that is produced in the shadow. But I fear no evil. You that follow me, you are the same. You don't fear no evil. Because you have a law on your side. Yes, sir. We are a most happy and worthy people for God to choose us to be his people and will kill nations for you. 
Your Bible teaches you that. That he will destroy a nation for your lives. And he's doing it. Why should we fly to a God like that? Just because that I've been following Mr. Blue-Eyed Caucasian all my life, and I have become to love him. And I wish is to kill your God and my God to save him. Oh, boy. That's bad. But that's just what you say in your heart. I would that they did not exist. I would kill them if I could. Many times you have wished that my God and your God, Master Farad Muhammad and Elijah Muhammad, was dead. So you could cling John to your devil. As the devil said himself, that if they could get me out of the way, they would have a glorious change, future for them. That's right. If they could get me out of the way, they would have a glorious future. But I am here. I'm here, and nobody can move me but he that put me. If, if they and you would unite together to try and put me out of the way, you would not do anything but put yourself out of the way. <laughs> because that he have the power over everything, so since he have the power over everything, he most certainly have power over me yes, to keep me, yes, protect me. But that is not going to happen with me and you no way. Because he loves you, I love you, and you love both of us. So, we don't have nothing to fear. We have been out of our brotherhood so long in this world till now we are joining up in it and we are so happy to do that that no one must not come around trying to make trouble among us because we both love each other. That's right. I love you and you love me. We want to build. We want to make the South Side our South Side. I mean the black man. So we have been working on drawings that if you would see, you will say, I'll be glad when that is done. Well, it's going to be done. We don't sit down and draw for nothing. So we do believe by this time and another year, the South Side, as it looks today, will not look like that within a year.
our own can get the leaders who is not making any progress. The leaders of Christianity and the leaders of what the devil occasion want them to do for him. The uh, devil, blue-eyed white people, they love to get around Reverend. They call him their man, you know? And Reverend calls himself their man. Reverend believed in that blue-eyed devil <laughs> because he calls him Reverend <laughs> and tries to pretend to be backing him up. But he's not backing Reverend up into nothing but the five hill. <laughs> Reverend, cannot you see he can't do nothing with me? He don't call me no reverend. But they cannot stop me, and I didn't get no license from him to preach. <laughs> when a man say that he's God's preacher, and have to be licensed by the world of enemies of his. I say, you have not yet become God's preacher. <laughs> you the devil, slave-making white man preacher. These are truths. He licensed, ordained you to preach, and you must preach like he said. <laughs> if you don't, why well, he will come over and tell you to sit down, Reverend. <laughs> <coughs> he didn't license me nor ordain me. I just went to preach it. by orders of my God. <laughs> what a God ordained minister of the spirit of himself looked like going over to a devil asking him for life. Oh, brother, it's sickening almost to talk about it. <laughs> that my people is ordained and sent by the devil to preach what he tell them to preach to his people. My brother, I would kick him in the face. <laughs> Don't be afraid, reverends. Don't be afraid. As long as you're here with me, they're not going to run in here to bother you. <laughs> Remember how Elijah fought with Ahab and proved his 400 preachers, liars. And he taken them and chopped their heads off. Now, I'm not going to chop your head off. Don't be thinking. But I'm going to chop that one that he put on the altar.
I want my God and myself to save you out of his clutches. Take you away from him. You'll be preaching Islam overnight. But little you know it. If you take time and read your Bible, you will bear me witness that you have nothing that you should do but to come and follow Elijah. Elijah must first come. Well, if there was a Elijah that was capable with the power of God, wisdom of God, to save the people, why do they look for him to come? Thousands of preachers all over the country, but you can't make a way for you. Your God and my God, because you don't serve him. You you don't convert people to our God. You convert them to Satan, the blue-eyed devil. All the converts that you make in your church today, you are making them for him. Not for, not for Almighty God, who have power over the heavens and the earth. You have made one for him all of your preaching that you have preached all your life. You have made one convert to the God of heaven and earth. You made them for the white folk. Not even one. I don't care if you make a thousand a day, as long as you are preaching for Christianity, you are making them for the white man. And he claims them to be his. Every Christian he claims to be his. Every Muslim I claim him to be mine. Who am I, he says. He said, I am that I am. <laughs> Who shall I say that sent me? Tell him, I am that I am. That sent me. Oh, brother, pretty strong. Tell them that I am the God of their father. <laughs> He's a strong man talking. If he is, I am that I am. What I am to believe in, I am that I am. Hmm? But tell them that I am the God of your father. And I have heard the moaning, the groaning of my people. I couldn't be satisfied sitting in heaven and hearing the groans and the moans of my people under hard past masters. So it moved me. And I am come down. Thank you. I am come down, not out of the sky, but I have come down from my high place to get in your place that you may know I love you. Thank you. Hung up by ropes, chains, burn that stake in the fire. 
my blue-eyed devil that Yaakov made to do just that to you and me. I'm come down from my high place as God in the heavens of the righteous to you that is bound in hell. I come down to loose you. I come down to free you. I come down to kill your enemies. We have read all these things of the past, not a similar thing coming to us at present. Where did you come from? Don't worry me in that. I came alone by myself. Think over that. I came alone by myself, yes, having the power to walk alone, yes, and having the power to destroy my enemy yes, and your enemy. Yes, I am alone. Yes, I am the one God. Yes, I don't need no help. Yes, I'm alone. Yes, but you were brought over here I come to free you from the kidnapping. <laughs> you did not want to come with that enemy, but they put you in chain. You couldn't help yourself. I have the key to unlock that chain. I'm around you. I can teach one of you to do that. Come on, pass the key over to Elijah. Since, ever since he was in his boyhood, he'd been craving to see someone come to the rescue of his people. So I'm going to give him the key. He will unlock the doors. He will let you out. I'm going to put power in that key so that he can use it in locking up your enemies. He has the key of both hell and death. He's going to put a stop to that bleeding you to death. I'm going to let him go. He's already angry. Elijah don't have to get angry at him. He has already been angry with him, but he didn't have nothing to fight with. So I'm going to give him something to fight with. And I'm going to fight with him. And the Lord said unto Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? He said, I know it. You're the all-knowing one. So if they can live, you know them. Not either argued with the other. They all was in agreement. Go tell them to hear the word of the Lord. That didn't work so well. They're too stubborn. He said, I will give you an instrument 
make a better one for you. And you use that instrument that I give you. Go call on the winds. Tell them to come from all four parts. Call on them, Elijah. They will hear you. They will come and help you. Tell them to help you with these flames. Think over that. So merciful, he saw us as people slain. And that he told the messenger to call on the nations that he named winds of the earth to help him. So the nation of the earth is now shocked in their souls to help. It is wonderful to know that you have a God on your side today. <laughs> he looked upon us, saw how pitiful we were. He said, I found you in a day of love. It was the time of his love for us. But we was walling in our blood, or our, rather I should say, in our ignorance of God and of ourselves. Like a baby that has just been born and he's walling in the blood of his mother. Poor little fella, he says in symbolic language, there was no one to put a swelling band on him. No one to wash him, clean him up. Just a newborn babe, just rolling in his own blood. No one to cut the navel cord. He's alone. That was a time of love, he said. He come. And he banished us up, up. And after he had washed us with the waters of Islam, he then banished us up. Then he says to us, you shall be mine. A mother coming from abroad. This is wonderful. The baby is here, but no one has thought enough of the baby to. <coughs> Excuse me. To wash the baby up. Put it on clean clothes and send it out among the public. My brother and sisters, Allah and myself is cleaning you up and you have on you have on beautiful garments. You're not ashamed to go out in the public. The public stare at you and they wonder. Who have did this job for you? <laughs> Tell him a man called himself Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> Both Holy Quran and Bible says after this work, he tells us, me, think over that, me and me alone, should you fear, I am your Lord. 
I have gotten you. Thank you. I have now taken you and give to you my name. Yes, a name that the world must respect. Yes, it is my name. Yes, I will call you by that name. Yes, and the world will know that I have visited you. Yes, All praise is due to God. Going round here calling yourself an angel now of heaven, calling yourself Mr. Jones, <laughs> Mr. Culpepper, <laughs> and Mr. Jackson. <laughs> Who is Jackson? Calling your beautiful self, a fallen angel from heaven by an enemy who pushed you out of heaven with his way of doing it. You don't have no name. All the names of God have a meaning to them. But your name don't have no meaning. The devil's name shall be destroyed forever. But he that have the name of Allah will live forever. For that name will live forever. So I'm going to bring to a, a close of our uh, evening work. <coughs> and that I hope you will do just what this old Christian song said. They used to sing it when I was a boy. I hope I will join the Centennial Army band runner. I hope I will join that band. Then he said, oh, look away into the heavens. Good Lord, I hope I will join that band. So this is the band. So you join on to it. You look better in your arm. Thank you for that. You sitting up here with us, you look good. You look like people that is civilized. Yes, <coughs> you look like people that seek something for yourself, something meaningful. You're fine looking people. So go along with us and the world will admire you. I don't care where you go on this earth today and tell those people that I came from America, I followed Elijah Muhammad there. They said, come here. <laughs> Any place that you go, you will be recognized and respected. Some of them have went over and told stories that they was following me in just to see what would happen. So the people took them in so fast they got excited. They know they was telling others than the truth, but that made them return and join up with us. We are in Russia, we are in China, we are everywhere. You can't go no place without finding us. That's right. That's right. 
Just go and try for yourself. And if you return, tell me that you didn't get respected by claiming me to be your leader. I will pay all of your expenses. Then I will go over there myself and ask them why. Naturally, they're not going to pay too much attention to you if you go over there looking for whiskey and beer. Even if they drink it themselves, they know you shouldn't drink it. So I think you I have been much uh, inspired into the spirit of Allah just to come out here and look at you. Any man love his family. If he don't, he shouldn't have a family. All men that have family, they should love them. Do good to the wife that brings into the world increase of yourself. We can't do nothing but plant seeds, but we should watch the seed and help it to grow. One thing we must remember again that we are up from slavery with slave ideals towards self and towards our wives. Our wives are far more better than we think they are if we show better to them. So let us do that. Let us show them good that uh, we are good men. And they won't want to go away from you. I don't see nothing out of your house that you should go after. If, if you have a black woman there, you have the best. So I'm going to offer you this few minutes if you desire to question me on something that is worthwhile I'm going to give you a few minutes to do it and if you have any question that you would like to ask me ask me No one can ask you a question. Yes, brother. Pardon me? We are being rebirthed now. As the Bible teaches you uh, in Paul's epistles that it is not known to us what we yet will be like. But he says that we know one thing. We will be like him. <laughs> Why the epistle read like that? Because the writer know or had learned that Allah was going to make a new people and whatever he looked like we will look like that. As he tell you in one of those epistles that we will be changed at the twinkling of an eye. And the Holy Quran also bear witness to that. We will be changed. And he told me out of his own mouth that he would change us up. The Holy Quran said he will cause you to grow into a new growth. 
and uh, all of the scientists agree with a change that he will make of us. But uh, he don't have nothing to do but just to say, be that, and you'll go right into it. As we know how the devil have made us ugly, disfigured, and what not, we don't want to be like that always. So he told me out of his own mouth that we will be a different people. And so I don't think you have to ask me, will it make us ugly? Well, he just left, leave us alone. We're already there. <laughs> he said to me that he will make us the most beautiful people ever lived. Yes. If he's going to make you the wisest, surely wisdom brings about uh, people contacting you. And you are not going to be sitting before people ugly. You must look beautiful to compare with the beautiful wisdom that you have in the head. So I think if you just stick around here and follow with me, I think you have everything that you ever uh, imagined that you wanted. Remember that everything that you ever imagined that you wanted will come to you. Just stick around here with me. So I am going to dismiss you now. And uh, my brother here, he has something to say to you. But I am about through myself. And I am going home. And I may be back soon to see if you are following me. Or believe in what I teach you. And if there is anything that you would like to say to me or ask me before I leave this stand, you're welcome to stand up and ask. Yes, sir, brother. I think, brother, you better come up closer. My hearing is not as keen as it used to be when I was young like you. I could hear a long ways off. Uh, sir, you said something about that. You would have to go and have one of God's names. And uh, I was, uh, 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 is, I think it's about three or uh, uh, maybe four or five years ago that uh, I, I noticed a lot of uh, friends of mine start naming their uh, children at a certain Asian names, you know, and I would like you to clear up whether uh, that that's no good, you know, and that you have to get a name from God. Is that <coughs> you and all your children can be named at once, and that's what you can get. I can name you. He's not going to take the name away that I give, but I don't want to be so smart to take over the naming of the people. I do know his name, and that's the names that you have to be named in. But I expect him here pretty soon, and I don't want him to come and find me taking over his job.
Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I would like to take this opportunity uh, to express my very sincere thanks to uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for all that he has done for black people throughout the universe. I, this is my first Sunday here in the city of Chicago. I arrived Wednesday and my friend wanted to take me around today driving to see the city. But as a teacher and a community worker in the city of Washington, D.C., I told my friend that I could not uh, begin my day in the city of Chicago without first coming to uh, the temple and pay my respects to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a man who has done for the world what no man at this time has ever done. He has raised us up, a people. He has raised us up a people lost and found. He has made the whole world stop and think and define themselves. He has made black people ask the question, who am I? And he has told us who we are. And he has told us not only who we are, but what we are to do and what directions in which we are to move. He has made the greatest minds stop and think. And they have reevaluated their thoughts, their teachings, all that they have learned from some of the greatest universities in the world. And they have seen that the messenger of law has the truth and the light, and they have moved in that direction to bring us the freedom and the justice and the equality and the independence that the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has led us to. We as a people throughout the universe can never fail to give thanks and honor to this great man. And not only has his teachings raised up a black people, but all races of the world have stopped and taken a good look at themselves and said, what must me do to free our people? I am a community worker and I have come in contact with people from all over the world, from people of all religions, all faiths, all walks of life, all professions. And these people have said, that it is because of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teachings that they have gone back unto their own and said that we will do the things that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has instructed his people do to free our people from oppression. The Asiatics, the Latin Americans, our brothers and sisters throughout Africa, our brothers in West Indies, our brothers and sisters in, the Haiti, in Haiti, all these people have stopped and re-examined themselves and following the teachers of Elijah Muhammad are bringing their people out of oppression, out of slavery, suffering and death to freedom, justice, equality and independence. And for this, we pay tribute to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. I think I better go see Haiti. <laughs> I used to read about it. I read about uh, how some of the uh, citizens prayed that uh, Allah could take away uh, the hibiscus. He could take away everything of the olive but please take away from them the shadow of this white man. <laughs> so when I learn of people that hates the devil like me, 
I want to go there and let them know I am their brother. I am uh, to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad from Praise Do Forever. I am just a lonely business lady. And uh, I have belonged to the Christian church from, like, from 14 years up until now, and I'm 58 years old. And I walked out of the Christian church. And what I want to ask... <laughs> what I would like to ask the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I was in distress. The white man came one day to cut my lights off in the store. I was lost. I had no money. I talked to God because I always believed in God. He locked the doors and didn't let me in to cut my light. I live, I have the business on Indiana. Ordinarily, I would have walked across Indiana to go downtown after I made up my little sum to go pay the light bill. But something changed my life and sent me to 37 in State Street. It was a little black woman. I said she was God. She walked between me and another lady. People don't believe this today. I got to say this. I've been wondering ever since until I got here. She said, young lady, you are a minister. She said, have anybody told you this before? Don't you believe it? So you can speak to little children and listen. Say, everything belongs to God. You worried about your own physical being and what you need. Everything belongs to God. Say, turn and go to God. So I, this is my second time here. I signed the card, and I didn't make up my mind, but my mind is made up. I'm going to follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, we enjoy listening at you and others give honor and praises to Allah his name, and for the work of his messenger. I thank you, but at this time now, we're going to dismiss you, and we expect you back here every day that we are open with the teachings of our God and your God and uh, his religion. So I have enjoyed myself here with you this afternoon Praying always that you be beloved and saved to see the hereafter when the devil has been destroyed and gone back to that which was prophesied that he would go into his well-bought doom for mistreating the poor black man in America. I thank you. And now I will turn you back in the hands of our assistant minister. Brother Shah will take care of you from now on. And I hope that Allah will bless me to return uh, next Sunday Thank you. to be here with you as I don't want to be no other place <laughs> but right here looking at you. I get great joy out of this. I see my reward coming to me from our Lord for bringing you here through the attractions of his word. Thank you. As I say unto you, 
May the peace and the blessings of Allah go with each and every one of you to your homes. And uh, try and fill this place up as often as you can. Salam alaikum.